Hello friends, you are watching Android Tech Solutions and today in this video I am going to show you how can you set up a Samba server in Ubuntu. Okay, so basically we are going to set up a passwordless Samba server. It means without authentications, the clients will be able to connect to the Samba server. Okay. So we will be having two clients, one will be a Ubuntu client and another will be a Windows 10 client. Okay, so I am going to show you the complete server and the client side configuration as well. So now let's get started. So right now I am on the server. So first of all you have to run this command sudo apt update hyphen y after that you need to install a package which is samba this is the package which you need to install and this package is basically used to configure samba server Okay, now we will create a directory to share. So I will create a directory called share. And I will just change the permission of this directory. I will set it to triple seven. Now we have to customize the main configuration file of Samba. Okay, the main configuration file of Samba is it is under etc samba smb.conf so we'll open it by nano sudo nano etc samba smb.conf now here first of all in global settings you will find work group okay so work group is equals to work group okay if you want to change the work group so from here you can change the work now we'll just move to the end of the file just press control N to get to the end of the file now here we have to create our share definition now here in square packets we'll add, we here we need to uh, mention our share name okay so i'll call it as public samba share okay so this is the share name which will be displayed on the client side the next the parameter which first parameter which we are going to add is path and then the path is the directory which you want to share okay let's say if you want to share any other directory so you have to mention the path and also you need to change the per, uh, uh, permission of the directory to triple seven if you want to give right access path then public public equals to yes because we are setting up public samba server without any authentication then browsable equals to yes okay what does browsable will do it will allow all the users in the system to access the samba share in the client machine now writable writable equals to yes it means we want the clients to edit inside this file okay we want the uh, clients to create files, delete files, uh, modify files inside this directory. Then one more parameter which we have is comment. So we can comment like my Samba share. Anything you can add. Now we will just write and quit from this file. Just press Ctrl O and then Ctrl X. Now we just need to start the service of Samba system ctl start smbd this is the service of samba which is smbd also we'll start another service which is nmbd which is the net bios service okay which allows in windows system to perform network discovery and then we'll enable these services for the boot time smbd and nmbd okay after restarting and enabling the service we will move to the client side before moving to the client side first of all we will check the server ip address so this is the ip of the server so i'll just copy this ip and now let's move to the client side okay now we are on the client side as i mentioned we will be having one ubuntu client and we'll be having another client which will be windows 10 client okay so now right now we are on ubuntu client now in Ubuntu, first of all you have to open the terminal. 
at the client side you have to open the terminal and then just try to ping the server that's why we took the IP address first of all we'll try to check whether we are network in network with the server so here I here you can see we are able to ping the server okay it means we are in network with the server so make sure that you are able to ping the server if you are not able to ping the server that it means you are not in the network with the server okay and if you are not in network with the server you won't be able to connect to the Samba server so make sure that you are able to ping the server now we'll open the file manager and we'll go to other locations and here at the bottom you can see connect to server here we have to give smb colon forward slash and then the server ip and hit enter so here you can see we are connected to the samba server and here you can see the share name which was public samba share which we created on the server and right now it is asking us to uh, connect with anonymous as we have set up it with passwordless and without authentication so we'll connect as anonymous and we are able to connect to it okay now here I'll create one directory called images okay so right now in this share we have two directories one is docs and one is images okay so I have created this directory images so here you can see we are able to create the directories okay create directories if I want to delete any directory so I am able to delete it okay so I am able to create delete and I can also perform update okay any kind of operation we can perform now right now we connected through the GUI okay here you can see we are connected through the GUI now I'll show you how can you connect with the command line. Now to connect with the command line, you have to install two packages, SMB client and CIFS utils. Sorry, it's SMB client and CIFS utils okay so I have already installed these packages SMB client and CIFS, CIFS utils now you have to run this command sudo SMB client hyphen L and then the server IP once you give the server IP it will ask you for the root password just hit enter So here you can see the share names here you can see the share name which we created and this is the comment which we gave okay on the server for in this uh, share configuration and here you can see the work group now we'll try to mount it sudo mount hyphen t cifs okay using hyphen t are mentioning the file system type so cifs is the file system then forward slash 192.168 the server IP and then the share name so the share name is public samba share and then we have to mention the mount point and then just hit enter so it will ask you for the password just hit enter as it a passwordless and without authentication so now here you can see it is mounted if at this point you get no errors that it means it is mounted now to verify whether it is mounted you can run this command sudo df-th so here you can see at the end it is mounted okay now if I go to cd slash mnt and if I do ls so here you can see that directory which I created images is here now let's say if I create another directory called docs so it says permission denied because we have to run it by sudo so I am able to create the directory as well so I have created a directory called docs now if I check in the GUI and if I refresh this so here you can see the directory has been created now let's say if you want to permanently mount it permanently mount it it means right now it is 
temporarily mounted okay after you reboot it will be unmounted now let's say if you want to mount it permanently so you have to go to fs tab file you have to do this if you want to mount it permanently and here first of all you have to give the server ip forward slash then server ip and then the share name then the mount point and the file system then defaults this this includes all the default mount options and then underscore net dev because it is a network device now write and quit from this file and then you have to run this command mount hyphen a and just hit enter oh this ip we have given wrong that's why it says network is reach unreachable now to troubleshoot this you can run mount hyphen a and if it is giving some error so uh, let's say it is showing network is unreachable so you have to check the server ip so now it is mounted also you can run this command sudo mount so here you can see it is mounted on mnt and it is permanently mounted it means if you reboot the client it will be still it will be mounted on mnt okay so we have seen the client uh, configuration on the ubuntu okay now we'll see the windows configuration okay now we are on the client side Now the same procedure we are going to follow in the windows side also we will just open command prompt and here we will just try to ping the server ip so first of all we have to make sure that we are the server is reachable or not okay so here you can see on the windows side also we have the server reachable if server is not reachable then you won't be able to connect to it now i'll just open file manager and here we'll just go to network and like file sharing is turned off and network discovery is also turned off so i'll just open it i'll just on this and when this once this is on here you can see we are able to see the server okay so here you will be able to see the server host name and the host name of uh, our samba server was server that's why we are able to see the server so here you are able to see the public samba share the share name and here you are you are able to see the directories images and docs now i'll try to create a new directory so we have created a new folder and let's say if i want to delete it so we can delete it as well now if you directly want to connect to it you can just open run and here you can just give the ip address of the server backslash and 192.168 and basically the server ip and hit enter so you are directly connected to it so this is how you can connect to the samba server in windows now one more thing we will be seeing is we'll uh, we'll move to the server and we'll make the samba share uh, read only okay so we'll also be seeing the read only configuration okay now we are on the server side now on the server we are going to make uh, our samba share read only so we'll just open the samba main configuration file sudo nano etc samba smb.com and we'll just press control plus n to get to the end of the file now here we'll just replace write table and we'll make it read only equals to yes and we'll just write and quit from this file so just press control o hit enter control x 
Now one more thing, if you want to check whether the configuration which you wrote in this configuration file is right or not, you can run this command, sudo test palm and just hit enter. So if you get any, if you don't see any error at this point, it means your configuration is right. Now here you can see uh, public samba share and here you can see the comment guest ok path this ok now we are going to see we are going to move to the uh, client side before moving to the client side we need to restart the service of samba so sudo systemctl restart smbd and nmbd we are going to restart both the service so when we make changes in the main configuration file or any changes we make in the main configuration file, always we need to restart the service to reflect the changes. Now we'll move to the client side. Okay, now on the client side, we'll just open the file manager and I'll try to connect to my Samba server. So I'm able to connect to it. And anonymous. I'll try to delete these files. So it says permission denied because we have made our Samba server read only now. Okay. If I want to create a directory, so I'm not able to do that. It says permission denied because we have configured our Samba share to be read only. Also in the command line, you have to you mount the share and then remount it. As we have uh, done the configuration in FS tabs, so we can uh, directly run mount hyphen A. Then if we go to MNT, now if we try to create a directory, let's say new. So it says permission denied. Okay, or if I try to remove any directory, let's say docs. So we are not able to do that. Okay, so we have successfully set up the Samba server and two kind of configuration I have shown you in the Samba. One is the read, uh, read write configuration, another is the read only configuration. And we had two clients, one was our Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu as a client and one was Windows 10 as a client. So thank you guys for watching this video. I've shown you the complete server side and the client side configuration. So thank you guys for watching this video. Do like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more amazing tutorials.